Uh, so let's just get into it, guys. Tesla just reported earnings about an hour ago, and their stock is down about five, six bucks right now after the bell. I'm not sure if you saw, but the stock did go down two percent on the day. It closed at 180 bucks. Now it's at 174 bucks, down another six dollars, or about another, let's see here, four, not not even about three and a half percent after the bell. So Tesla's not looking too pretty right now after the bell. Let's break it down. Let's dive into these numbers, talk about the chart a little bit. We'll break down some financials. So if y'all find value, hit that like button. Make Make sure to subscribe and don't forget to get up to 15 stocks for Moomoo. Link down below. We'll talk more about that later. And now let's dive into it. So again, Tesla ended up going down 2% on the day. And now after the bell, it is down another roughly three and a half, four percent meaning it is down a whopping about 10 bucks from where it closed yesterday. Not too crazy, but it is going in the wrong direction, at least if you're a bull on the stock. And pulling up the four hour chart here, we're starting to fall under this one wedge, which is not a good sign for the bulls. We're well under the moving averages on this four hour chart. Now we're starting to fall under 175 ish, which is not good. And like I said in my video earlier today on Tesla, if we do fall under 175, we could end up filling the gap down to 165, which you guys probably know that was the low from the middle of March, just a little bit over a month prior to me filming this video. So they ended up doing EPS of 85 cents, which came in line with the 85 cent estimate, but but they did be on revenue. All right, can't complain about that. $23.33 billion versus the 23.29, and I believe that's growth of around 25%. We'll take a look at the financials here in a second, but overall, inline EPS, they beat barely on revenue, but still, it's a beat, and the stock is down a good chunk here after the bell, and it's pretty much holding on by a thread right around 165, 170, which needs to hold for the bulls. I don't know how many times I have to say that, but this is such a critical point for the bulls coming up because if we do break out in, or rather break down under 165 the low from the middle of March it is going to get ugly for the bulls the selling at that point will likely speed up so let me actually pull up the live news or not not the live news tab Safari let me pull it up so we can see exactly what they ended up doing based on this earnings release which I'm not going to go too deep into everything but we will skim through it and see what is going on so right now let me show you guys this operating margin in terms of profitability here. Then we'll talk about cash and operations. 11.4% operating margin in Q1. You guys can see that right here. 2.7 billion gap operating income in Q1. We have 2.5 billion gap net income in Q1 and we have 2.9 billion of non-gap net income in Q1. And when it comes to cash, guys, operating cash flow right now for the company is $2.5 billion. Free cash flow of 0.4 billion, so 400 million in Q1 one with 0.2 billion or 200 million dollars increase in their cash and investments in Q1 to 22.4 billion dollars and you guys can see all you know these different uh, little excerpts here the summary for each of these which we're not going to get too deep into in this video but I do want to look at this right here. This is very important, all these numbers, so you better pay attention, guys. So this shows you essentially the unaudited financial summary of Tesla here, and we can see the previous quarters and the quarter that was just reported, which is Q1 of 2023. So total automotive revenues, and mind you guys, Tesla still makes a bunch of their top, uh, you know, a bunch of their top line comes from automotive revenue, which is not a surprise. That is not a surprise at all. You can see total automotive revenues here up top on the left. That came in at almost $20 billion, roughly $19.9 billion, which is up 18%. You guys can see right here year over year. And hopefully you guys can see it, but it's up here on the right where it says on the top right where it says 18% year over year growth for total automotive revenues. And you guys can see here, it looks like it did come down from Q4 of 2020. 22, where they did $21.3 billion of automotive revenue. So that did come down, which makes sense. You know, that was pretty much expected priced in. And when it comes to their energy generation and storage revenue, look at that jump year over year, 148% jump year over year. That came in at $1.5 billion and services and other revenue came in at $1.8 billion, up 44% year over year, bringing their total revenues to $23.3 billion, which again is up 24% year over year, like I mentioned a couple of minutes ago. And just to do a quick little rundown on their revenue breakdown, again, most of their revenue comes from automobile sales, right? Again, 19.9, almost 20 billion in automobile sales, where roughly 
$3.3 billion comes from energy generation and storage and services and other revenue. So $20 billion versus Three and a half billion. That's pretty much pretty much 85, 90 percent, whatever that is, uh, you know, a percent of their revenue comes from automotive revenues and coming down here a little bit more. You guys can see total gross profit is four point five billion dollars. That's actually down 17 percent year over year. Not the best sign there for gross profit. Then we have operating expenses of one point eight billion dollars is pretty much right in line to what they were last year. It's actually down a little bit from last year, down one percent on the operating expenses side of things. Then adjusted EBITDA is roughly four point two billion dollars. That's down 15 percent percent year over year. You guys can probably see that right here. Let me zoom in to show you guys, right? You see that down 15% year over year. Then looking here at the next couple of lines, let's see net income attributable to common stockholders came in at $2.5 billion. That's down 24% year over year. Not the best sign there. And free cash flow came in at $441 million down 80% year over year. So on the free cash flow side of things, this is down a ton. But if we look here at cash, cash equivalents and investments, they did beef that up year over year up 24%. And now they have cash, cash equivalents and investments of $22.4 billion. You guys see that right there. And coming down a little bit more here, let's see what else we need to break down. Oh, this right here, Model SX production, Model 3Y production and total production. You guys can see of course, Model S and X, there's not nearly as much production as there is Model 3 and Y. That makes sense. We all know that. They ended up producing in Q1 roughly 420,000 Model 3s and Ys. That's up 45% year over year. That's pretty impressive there. And they ended up producing roughly 19,430 roughly Model S and Xs, which is up 37% year over year. Nice. Pretty nice jump there. We do want to see that, you know, production continuing to grow as there's more, you know, gigafactories now. They're expanding. It only makes sense, right? And deliveries, though, the interesting thing here is as production for Model S and X, those are up, you know, production is up a lot. Deliveries are down 27%. You guys can see here they delivered 10,695 uh, 10, uh, Model S's and X's in Q1. And that's down 27%, but they delivered 412,000 Model 3s and Ys, which is up 40% year over year. And total deliveries in general are up 36% year over year. Pretty good there in terms of that. Let's come down a little bit more and see what else we uh, we can look at here. So vehicle capacity, this is interesting here. We have California, we have Shanghai, Berlin, Texas. Of course, these are all the different uh, factories, right? Capacity right now in California, that's roughly at 100,000 right now. That's for the Model S and X. And for the Model 3 and Y, it's 550,000. That's in California again. And for Berlin, Model Y is roughly at 350,000. Shanghai, 750,000 for Model 3 and Y. And you guys can see all these different numbers right here and coming down a little bit more let's see anything else that i want to mention let's see other highlights energy storage deployments increased by 360 percent in q1 year over year to 3.9 gigawatts an hour the highest level of deployments we have achieved due to ongoing mega factory ramp that's good the ramp of our 40 gigawatt an hour mega pack factory in lanthrop or lathrop california has been successful with still more room to reach full capacity that's pretty good you guys can see here the energy storage deployments that's ripped over the last couple of years as expected and coming down here maybe a little bit more let's see a lot of photos a lot of charts here you guys can see oh look at that the cyber truck pilot line look at that them putting it together that's pretty awesome look at all these uh pictures here guys that's pretty uh, pretty cool stuff and you guys know the cyber truck production is beginning probably right now but they say i think second half of 2023 which pretty much guys we're almost there at this point you guys can see here all the different production and we can see key metrics quarterly right now vehicle deliveries millions uh, this is in millions of units that's up a good chunk here from 2020 we can see this is operating cash flow and free cash flow right here that's up over the years which is good trending in the right direction then on the right we have net income you guys see that here and adjusted EBITDA which is also up into the right that's really good and yeah that's pretty much it guys we could talk more in depth about this of course here we have the financial statements actually let me look at their 
balance sheet very, very quickly here. So current liabilities right now for Tesla, right at $15.9 billion. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but just bear with me. $15.9 billion. Actually, no, that's accounts payable, is it? Yeah, that was accounts payable. So total current liabilities, the, it's, it's so hard to read these lines sometimes, guys. $27.4 billion in total current liabilities. Hopefully I'm reading that right. And total current assets. How much assets do they have? Total current assets, guys. Roughly 42.9. So looking at the current ratio, $42.9 billion current assets over what was it? 27.4 billion current liabilities. That is over one. That is good. We want to see that. And cash and cash equivalents, like I said, they were right around 22.4 billion, which is a little bit less than their total current liabilities, which I mean, they can't cover it with their uh, current cash and cash equivalents and investments. But overall, the current ratio being over one, I guess that's good enough here. So that's not too bad balance sheet wise. And again, there's a, there's so much to talk about here, guys. We're not going to be able to get, get into all of it in this video, but that's a quick rundown on Tesla's earnings. Deliveries are up, production's up, revenue's up. EPS came in line with the estimates. You know, it's not as good as it could be, but of course they're looking to expand. Their, their, their margins are coming down right now because A, they're dropping prices of their vehicles and B, they're trying to get the, the, the majority of the market share. That's their strategy right now. They already had a huge margin, a nice high profit margin. Now they're sacrificing that to get to the masses. It makes sense to me, guys. And going back to the stock chart, let's see how this is looking right now, guys, before we talk about some other stocks very, very quickly. We can see right now Tesla stock is selling off a good chunk. Like I said, it's down to about $175-ish a share after the bell now. And we can see it is fighting to hold. So I'm telling you guys, if we break 165, things could get ugly on Tesla. And by the way, do you guys own Tesla? Let me know down below in the comments. And if you haven't hit that like button yet, hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe. And don't forget to get up to 15 stocks from Moomoo. It is literally free money. Use that link down below. Open up an account. You get one free share of stock. If you deposit at least 100 bucks, you get four more stocks totaling five stocks. And if you deposit at least 1,000 bucks onto the Moomoo platform, guys, you get another 10 stocks totaling 15 free stocks. It is literally free free money. And it's essentially a win-win. You get some free money. It also helps out the channel. I appreciate you guys as always. And with that being said, let's quickly look at some other stocks here. I don't want to make this video too long, but let's quickly look at some other ones that reported earnings. So we had IBM report. This stock seems like it's up a little bit after the bell. Nothing too crazy. It's up around 1.6%, but at one point it was up 4.3% and it gave back a lot of that game. So let's see what they did. They ended up doing a $1.36 EPS, which beat the $1.26, so that's good. And they did revenue, let's see, $14.25 billion versus $14.35. So they ended up missing on revenue, and I'm not seeing anything here on guidance, but overall, guys, we're up a little bit. We were up a lot more after the bell, but to me, it looks like we are struggling here at this trend line, and we're, uh, we're struggling to break those moving averages on the four hour chart. So let's see if we end up doing that. And if we do take out the highs from a couple of days ago, being about 133 bucks a share. So I'm going to set my alert there. Mark is out or above and we'll see where it goes. And we also have Zion's Bank Corporation report today. And well, their stock is pretty much unchanged. Actually, no, wait, it did. Uh, it went up 7% on the day. Now it's down a little bit after the bell by the looks of it. It's down about 4%. Oh, okay. So it's fallen a little bit there after the the bell. So they ended up doing EPS of $1.33, which missed the $1.53 estimated on revenue. Where's their revenue at, guys? Um, I'm not seeing their revenue. Where the heck is it? Why would they Why would they post EPS without showing the revenue? But either way, it looks like we had a lot of hype heading into earnings. Again, it went up 7% and the earnings actually came out and now we're starting to see that dump off. And of course, you guys know the regional bank situation, although it's calming down right now, it's cooling off a little bit. I don't think it's over yet. I think it's far from over. I don't know. I mean, call me crazy, but I'm not too convinced that we're done quite yet, and I'm not going to just jump into these regional bank stocks for the heck of it. I'm going to give it some time, let the dust settle, and see how things end up playing out. And if we do reverse above, let's say, the 180 SMA here on Zion's on the four-hour chart, that's where we could start to maybe break out. But until then, I'm going to be cautious. I'm going to set my alert at 37 bucks. Mark is out or above, and we'll see where it ends up going from that point. Let's see what else reported, guys, or what other companies reported today. Then we'll wrap up the video. I don't want to make it too long. Again, the focus of this video was Tesla. So we had Morgan Stanley report, I believe, this morning. They did a $1.70 
EPS versus $1.62. That beat on revenue of $14.5 billion versus $13.92 billion. That also beat. So double beat there for Morgan Stanley. And let's see what the stock did. Barely went anywhere. Went up 0.7%. And we're right by the 180 SMA, which needs to break. That's right around 90 bucks, 91 bucks. Let me actually set my alert. Mark is that we're above 91 bucks a share. And let's do one more, guys. I think U.S. Bank Corp also reported this morning. The stock went up 2.3% on the day. And mind you guys, you'll notice all these bank stocks, they're just consolidating it for, you know, for the most part. They're not ripping in either direction. They're just consolidating. Well, except for JP Morgan. JP Morgan is ripping in the uh, you know upwards direction, right? But US Bank Corp, USB going back to it, it is pretty much just flat at this point. And you know, it went up 2.3%. All right, great on the day, but still pretty flat overall. So they ended up doing adjusted EPS of $1.16 versus $1.12 estimated on revenue of $7.17 billion versus $7.13. $2 billion estimated. I'm not seeing anything here on guidance, but overall, guys, I'm just waiting to see, especially on these bank stocks, when we're going to break the consolidation range, which a lot of them, again, except for JP Morgan, they're just consolidating. So we have to wait and see when and if we're going to get that leg up on any of these stocks. So I'm going to set my alert at 40 bucks here on um, US Bank Corp. Mark is at or above, and we'll see if it starts breaking that moving average. If so, there could be a lot more momentum around the corner. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to wrap up the video. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and my second channel, Stas Talks Money, which I am doing a $100 giveaway once we hit 1,000 subs on that channel. So if you're not you know, yet subscribed, you're going to want to do that if you want to win 100 bucks, Go make sure you subscribe. Link down below. Don't forget to also get up to 15 stocks from Moomoo Moo and 12 stocks from Weeble. Feel free to check out my Patreon as well. If you guys want to be a part of the Patreon portfolio, you want to be in the Discord chat, you want more access to me throughout the day, and if you want to see my charts and ideas throughout the day, all of that's on Patreon, link down below, or you can join the YouTube channel membership, whatever works for you. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys later.